Well, hello, my Dexter's friend. This is me, still the same gnome and the show of Bearded Engineer. This time, my friend, let's put the soldering iron aside, have a glass of nice tea, and just talk for a while. Let me sketch out some plans for the future. To date, I've accumulated a stock of good old vintage stuff that I'd like to restore. True American legend, Commodore 64, condition unknown, power brick is missing, peripherals as well. Escape key is broken off, it was purchased on eBay as is for a buck. Its youngest sibling from Germany, Commodore Plus 4, same story with peripherals as in previous case was donated by one German guy, saying I don't wanna just dump it. Sovietica BK-0010 Epic epic legend born in USSR Condition – coma Kinda powers up, displays some rubbish, doesn't react at any user input at all. Power supply provided, plus some accessories. It's been conquered in unequal battle against my greediness and left to wait for its time to come. The icing on the cake an exotic beast, yet another data spectrum compatible machine, built from all kinds of stuff. The case is taken from Soviet ES-9205 console, heavy like hell. Condition – clinical death. All electronic parts containing gold were pillaged. Of all the peripherals, the power cord only. It had been purchased at flea market for next to nothing. Frankly, this one is the most desired piece of my collection, but more on that in future videos. So, where was I? All this stuff needs what? Um, a huge trash can, fire, um, bulldozer. Well, honey, how to say it? You are mistaken. Well, okay. Oh, I've never thought it can work like that. All this stuff requires a monitor. And let's remember what we've been using as a display for our home micros back in the days. That's right, it was a TV set. Should I mention that it was a CRT? Because LCD displays back then were looking like this at best. Or rather like this. Since the TV used to be a CRT one, an authentic monitor has to be CRT as well. Preferably made from a TV set also. And what's the problem, you'd ask? There are lots of TV sets for sale everywhere, right? Yes and no, because the devil is always in the details. First of all, each and every machine has its own specific video output. The Commodore 64 outputs a two-component video signal with Luma and Chroma channels separated, what was later called as video. Later models and Plus 4 can do composite either. If you still don't get it, it's the yellow RCA jack. Unfortunately, most retro 8-bit systems have only composite. Electronica BK is a whole different story. Black and white output is composite, the color one is RGB. But black and white picture is being output as monochrome, and to produce grayscale image, we got to mix three basic colors. Zatik Spectrum and its Soviet colleagues traditionally used RGB with separate signals for each of basic color and composite sync. And now the saddest part of the story. The Soviet TVs had none of those inputs. Except for maybe models like Horizon 418 and Beroska 485, but they went into production in the very end of the Soviet age, being rather symbols of different times. Soviet TV used to have only RF input and usually VHF range only. UHF broadcasting was not widespread outside of big cities and VCR decks were yet to become a thing. Yet again, the infamous Electronica VM12 recorder used to have RF as a primary output. That's because Soviets couldn't make it. No, not really. Popular demand for the home microcomputers and its production emerged in USSR at about the same time as the other technologically advanced countries. And to be fair, computer monitors like Electronica 6105, 6106, VTC 201, 202 were being produced in numbers for enterprise needs with an appropriate picture quality, far better than the TVs. The TVs were just never meant to be used with computers, they were simply television sets. But even so, starting from third unified generation, Soviet TV sets were being designed with adapter models in mind. 
and thus with all required interfacing, so the potential for improvement existed. However, that's all theory, but reality… In reality, we used to connect computers to television in all possible ways. The composite output seemed to be the easiest way. You had to find the spot in the TV where extracted and demodulated CVBS signal arrives and cut in with the signal from your device. Easy, right? Not exactly. Usually no one bothered enough with measurements to make the signal levels match. Did somebody of us had equipment and experience back then? So our contrast and other distortions were normal. But it's only half the battle. Typically, after cutting into a composite line, we've been facing yet another problem. TV broadcasting in USSR was carried out in Soviet French SICAM standard, but imported machines produced PAL or even NTC signal. What we've been getting as a result? Remember that? That's right, it was black and white picture. That's because Luma signal was being detected properly, but the chroma remained unknown for the SICAM decoder. The only way was to mount a PAL decoder in parallel with the factory default SICAM1. But this was not the perfect solution either, because the frequencies of chromium and subcarrier are different for PAL and SICAM. Thus, signal cross talk between Luma and chroma was taking place, and in PAL mode the TV used to work noticeably worse. Speaking of NTC, there's been even more problems that usually ended up with nothing. Regarding the is video like input, we usually didn't care and simply use it to mix channels, resulting in a regular CVBS composite signal, which nullified all the advantages of this format, taking us back to signal cross tall. No one even bothered with finding separate lines for Luma and Chroma somewhere in depth of the color module. With RGB, it likely should have been the easy way, since the receiving devices, electron guns, work with the base color signals, already separated. They don't require any decoding and all that fuss with video standards. But in reality, connecting by RGB had been turning into a torture for both TV set and a poor guy who'd been trying to do that. You can, of course, feed the RGB signals directly to the video amplifiers of the tube. But in this case, you bypass the auto-leveling and control nodes, thereby getting unregulated picture and both white and black balance become completely off. It would seem was the problem to feed all the signals the way it should be, but not so easy. The auto-leveling doesn't work with basic signals, but with color differential signals and the brightness signals that come from the decoder. So the signals had to be remixed with resistors, producing a brightness signal and two color differential signals, from which the base ones are being restored. No need to tell that all those conversions didn't improve the picture quality. On top of that, the precision class of the resistors we used to have usually didn't allow to remix signals correctly, so the colors were totally bunkers. Well, of course, you could have done everything properly and good, but it required necessary equipment, parts and, last but not the least, the appropriate knowledge. Probably the most difficult thing to obtain back then. You had to spend hours and hours in libraries all alone trying to figure out how the heck the damn box worked. So what are we gonna do in our case? Maybe we should look towards actually monitors like VTC or 6106. Well, we could. But again, here we run into the same problem. A large variety of standards and for each system we need to have a specific monitor. For sure we can buy a professional multi-system monitor like this one, but taking into account the shipping, it'll turn a bit pricey. And if there's no way to buy something, we make it. Make an analog monitor for every occasion. And just for that comes in handy the cover for Soviet Compact TV used, which means used, literally. It used to be a TV back in the days, and it served me faithfully for 25 years, but then… then I dismembered it. But it's a whole different story. According to tradition, the project needs epic name. A use that outlived its time, let it be called Eternal Use. We have a CRT for this project as well. It's not the native tube for this model, but an industrial CRT. It has been ripped out of the monitor Electronica VTC202 already mentioned. This CRT is not a simple one. 
it has enhanced resolution and sharpness. This scene is really cool even compared to famous Trinitrons. It wasn't for nothing that many engineers back then used to make TVs with this tube, it was a big trend. I have already time to try it out and I can say with confidence that this is a godsend. Now let's define our goals and draw up a technical specifications. First and foremost, the monitor must provide a high quality picture, the best quality that is possible with analog signal. The original exterior must be fully preserved, no protruding elements, connectors or buttons, all controls ought to be original. All possible inputs must present. Composite, S-Video, RGB, component also for good measure. The monitor must work correctly with all video standards – CCOM, PAL, NTC. No toggle switches. Identifications of systems, video modes and aspect ratios must be done electronically. The monitor must produce sound, since not every micro is equipped with speaker. Needs to be able to use a remote. This is not a key requirement, but it would be convenient and look impressive. By the way, I have such a clicker from later model on hand. And one more. Sure thing that we are going to build a CRT monitor, but I would still like it to be as light and non-bulky as possible. It would be nice if an XTV retained its main ability to show television. But since analog broadcasting is missing for years now, we need a digital tuner, a fairly common device nowadays. TV – not bad, of course, but today we'd rather prefer YouTube and other online services. So let there be Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, Internet access and a connection to a home NAS. Why not? Let's go for broke! It is clear what to do. Now we are gonna figure out how to do it. To begin with, we need to understand in detail how an analog TV works. Because what we are gonna do is actually an analog TV. There is a lot of work here, but don't worry, we'll analyze each stage in detail and the schematics and board layout will be made open source. That's it for today. Next time we are gonna find out how a television signal works and what a TV consists of. Subscribe, don't miss the next episode, you're always known. Oh!